Public Schools Board of Education um, at 7 p.m. All right. Um, are there any questions or additions to the agenda? If not, I would like a uh, motion to accept the agenda. Motion. Okay. Second. Motion by Chris, seconded by Jim. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. no. All right. Moving on, the celebration of map success. Uh, yes, and actually we're going to talk about two things. One is the Kennedy Meet uh, recognition. I put you on the spot. Do you want me to read what you wrote, or do you want to talk about it, Aaron? Why don't you read it? Okay. So um, what Aaron uh, gave to me was that uh, in Kennedy Elementary has been recognized by the NEED project as the Michigan School of the Year. Kennedy Elementary Science Club has been working hard all year studying and learning about energy. The NEED project's mission is that. This included doing experiments about energy and learning about jobs and professions in the field that our students could enter in the future. On June 20th to 23rd, a group of nine, uh, four students and five adults, will be traveling to Washington, D.C. to receive the award and to continue learning about energy. Uh, and they'll be touring the nation's capital with other students from around the country. So that's kind of become almost a habit here at uh, MAPS, but it doesn't come without a large amount of work and dedication, so thank you, um, uh, Aaron, you, Connie, and, um, well, Lacey. Lacey, there we go. You, Connie, and Lacey are involved in that, so thanks for the work that you have. It's been fun. Okay. And then the other, yes? And then the other, just a little spring sports recognition. Uh, the MHS girls track team went to state. We came back with two individual state championships and their best finish ever as a team. Annie Fuller won the 800 and 1600 uh, meter runs to repeat as state champ, and the girls finished third. Um, the boys golf team finished third in the districts here in Manistee, won the regionals, and they finished 13th in the state uh, last weekend. So uh, the good thing is is that both the girls track and the golf team have almost all of their uh, participants back next year. So we're looking forward to um, hopefully better things yet next year. Yes. And there were other there were other uh, students uh, or athletes that placed in the, in the girls uh, track team. Uh, car record, the one boy that went down there ran a PR. It was just a good day overall. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on to public communications. This portion of the agenda is for persons to address the board. Public communication and comment is limited to three minutes per individual. This period is only for those items that appear on the agenda. A second public communication and comment period is scheduled at the end of the meeting for any other items. We have one, Stacy Andrews Ramsey. Okay, Stacy, would you like to come Hi. over? Hi, I'm Stacy Andrews Ramsey. I'm here um, as the president of the MTA today to talk about our concerns towards the budgeting items and the um, Apple technology. One is that we've all been under the impression that we're on a freeze, that we only spend money on items that are of necess necessity to. Uh, maintain the district and to maintain education or for safety um, and yet we've been you know spending money along and been giving budgets to spend money in our classrooms and things that may be, uh, be beyond the actual need to run a classroom our second concern is that you know technology is a very important part of our district and we have a technology initiative we have a, a plan for the future and all those things but I don't think that it's a a plan that our community and even our, our staff understands how it works and what the spending is and where the money's coming from and what the savings are. That that's one of the things that's not being clearly communicated and therefore is causing lots of confusion and lots of frustration at this, this time of, you know, kind of a budget crisis. We've heard from the state that there seems to be more money coming our way, but again, we'll need to understand 
how is that going to work for our district in our time of, of need. Um, part of that budget concern also was last board meeting on the agenda was, uh, or is it this one, to hire um, a PR consultant and PR company, um, which, you know, if we, we need some further communication with our community about the district and how it operates and its needs, um, we would hope that that can come right from with that, with in-house and that we don't have to spend another twenty, fourteen to twenty thousand dollars of money that uh, our employees have have given back for the district to use to keep the school operating. So that's I guess all we wanted to say towards those budgeting items and our technology. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susan. Sure. Uh, yeah, I would love to respond. Um, we are okay with eliminating supply budgets. If that's an agreement, we, 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 will, we will do that. Um, the, the other thing on the uh, PR, uh, that was not put on the, as a decision, that was put on as a discussion item for the board, uh, wasn't on the agenda as a decision, in that we know we have an issue with communication. It was identified in our strategic plan, and um, I commend Ken Blakey Shell for bringing a potential solution. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it or not do it. It's not been put to a vote. It's not been included in the budget. It was merely a discussion item. And um, we need to be careful not to, uh, to be very blunt, punish people who bring forth ideas. We need to recognize, appreciate people who bring forward ideas and um, and and just make sure that we give those ideas uh, a, a good look. And if they're something that is uh, worth doing, we do it. If not, we need to express our appreciation that someone's trying to make something better and um, explain to them why we're not going to do that. Um, just a quick comment to add on, if, if I may. Um, We've talked about the communication issues, and again, that's an issue. Uh, even here among our own board, talking about these things, one of the ideas that we had was later on promoting, you know, establishing a workshop specifically towards that, going over the technology, um, you know, how does the budget work, um, what are plans for the future. Are really, I have to commend. Our, our, our school system for thinking ahead and looking at long range, you know, our budget and our plans, you know, it, it's rare to see that. And I think it, it is pretty well thought out if you do take a look at it and you do understand it. So maybe that's something we have to figure out at a time, but maybe end of the summer or something we will put that up there. Um, the freeze is, you know, it's a, it's a freeze on non-essential items. Uh, for items of necessity, you know, we still need to go forward with our budget. It was in the budget. Um, I, I feel that this one, to, I personally feel that this one-to-one -one budget, this one-to-one -one, um, program is a necessity. We have it up and running. Um, we need to keep it going. We cannot just stop it in the middle of the Any other comments from the board? No. Uh, any other public communications? That is it. Thank you. All right, moving on to correspondence and superintendent's report. MCOE update. <clears throat> if there's there's really uh, not anything new on items, uh, unless you have questions on items A or B. Not, then let's move on to C. Uh, finance report. Yeah, I don't know if anybody had any questions on the finance <coughs> report that was included in your packet um, showing uh, where we are as of the end of May. Um, I'll be talking more um, in a few minutes about the budgeting. Um, the, I remind you that the budget figures that you see in that first column are the budget that you amended budget from the March meeting. Um, the fourth column over is the year to date totals. The second column from the right would be the uh, remaining balance in revenue. It's the amount still to be collected, or in the expenditures, it's the amount still available to be spent. And then the last column shows the 
how that reflects as a percentage of the entire budget for that particular function code. <coughs> Anyone have any questions at this point? No? Thank you, Howard. Thank you. If not, let's move on to the note. Again, one of the most important things that we do here is we, um, we hire teachers, we uh, try and promote their well-being. This is kind of what makes our school system tick. So what do we have in store? Well, um, we offered and uh, early severance plan this spring and um, either through that or just retirements these are the list of people who, um, who took that and we wish them well it's always mixed uh, <clears throat> mixed feelings when people accept those um, we hate to see them go but it's a great savings to the district and these are the teachers that Oh, right These are the teachers who who are who were either here or on layoff that, that took the severance plan and are no longer going to be with us. Uh, Brad Solberg, Nancy Ferguson, Joyce Smith, Nancy Nielsen, Fanfare, Carlina Breitner, Dave Russell, and Michelle Piper. So we wish those teachers well, um, and we have three teachers that we are hiring to replace. We had some other internal shifting that went on, um, but we have three teachers to introduce tonight, and I'm going to let Mr. Huber uh, introduce those, those candidates. Sure. And you have the right. I have many pleasures of being an administrator, and these are, this is always one of the most fun things that we do, and that's uh, hiring new people to come aboard at MAP, so I want to introduce them to you tonight. Had a great process, a lot of good candidates, a lot of people look great on paper. Shelly was there to <coughs> confirm all of this. But when you meet these guys, it just became clear that they belong here, they fit here, and that's really important. So, and we're gonna parade them up here. They're too good of a group, they dressed up. I'm not gonna waste their time back there. We want them on camera. So Jessica, come on up here. This is Jessica Howland, and uh, she's coming to us fresh out of school. Uh, she's from her, her hometown is Howell. And I gotta tell you a story. Um, Jessica pretty much could have walked into a job, I think, at Howell. And so between us and Howell, her hometown, and she wanted to come to Manistee. And I just thought that spoke volumes to her. So we're really excited to have her, and she's excited to be here. So great job. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this, this is exciting to have at Jefferson this year. Um, and by the way, Jessica's going to be at uh, first grade, doing our fifth section of first grade. Our new second grade teacher, former student at MHS, I know her very well, Rachel, come on up here, it's Rachel Wiesner, soon to be Rachel Wagner. Uh, Rachel has a great story working her way through school, um, <coughs> Ferris, getting her certification, uh, did our student teaching here at Manistee, and now has uh, spent two years at Baldwin, and is excited to come over and to really come back home to MAPS. She's going to do a great job, uh, great letters of recommendation, great uh, phone calls when we called over there. Very sorry to see her go, but we're, we're actually very excited to see her come here. So, Rachel Wiesner, soon to be way. And, you know, we, Josh Smith and I decided that we needed a guy to talk about football <laughs> once in a while on Monday morning. So, uh, Jake Charette, come on up, Jake, is really going to fit that bill. Um, Jake, and again, former MHS grad. Um, did a student teaching here under Don and Muse. Uh, has been managed to Catholic for the last couple of years. I'm not a Facebook guy, but I know that the Facebook page about Manistee Catholic is not very happy about Jake coming over here. Uh, he's going to be a real great presence over at the building. Again, great references, uh, great stories about him, a sense of loss at Manistee Catholic. Uh, can't wait to have him on board. So Jake Charette, third grade. The most fun about this is they didn't know they're going to give a speech right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, actually, these guys, you know, and talk about a timeline and their dedication and a demonstration of that. Literally, we uh, offered these guys a job last Wednesday. They were training, or maybe Tuesday it was. They were training last Friday, and now today they're starting another 10-day session of training uh, that began today. They had homework today, and they got to get up bright and early. 
uh, tomorrow morning to continue that training. So uh, they've really shown that they're uh, here and ready to go to work, and it's exciting. And they're all excited about spalling training. I can see the smiles on their face. And if it's okay with you guys, um, in a few minutes, if they can head out, just because they got another one. Just want to introduce them and welcome. Thank you. If I could just make a comment, Andy, because it's really quite remarkable <coughs> what our staff do. Um, you have 15 teachers going through 10 days of training, including Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to do a, basically about a four-hour training and then about a couple hours of homework. And uh, because of a schedule <coughs> to allow our teachers to join us this year, they're doing that on Saturday as well. So. You know, school school ended and they had a couple of days break and then they're right back at it. Yeah, it's uh, they we had teachers in, in Apple training last week. We had Spalding training. Is, uh, uh, again, if you don't aren't closely tied to education or teachers, we might not be starting to our staff a lot. They're to be commended. All right. Thank you. Call for um, just, you know, by policy, I approve overnight field trips and then let you know when they happen. And the golf team went on an uh, overnight trip for this. Um, those next, well, the leadership team, if you have any questions on any of those reports, the data review we keep on the budget, but because the principals, well, uh, Andy and I were there too, uh, we're in the, we're, we're in professional development today, but they're they're still there, um, so we won't be doing the data review. Right? Okay. And technology purchase update. Yeah. Um, so last board meeting, you approved of a lease and the purchase of <clears throat> some Apple hardware. Um, we went back to execute that lease. And it, it was it was basically either denied or changed significantly, and so um, we are we are in the process of we have a couple different options, and we're going to have an option that looks very similar. We expect to what you approved as far as uh, keeping that budget number <coughs> fluid or not fluid but uh, stable. Uh, keeping that budget number stable from year to year, <clears throat> and then um, allowing us to go forward with that purchase. But I'd like Ken to talk about one, um, the sale of the Apple hardware that we have scheduled for next week, and that we need to know that we can go ahead and go through with, and then also the um, uh, what that what that purchase that we're going to ask you to approve on the 20 I said 26th I think it's the 25th on uh, June 25th what what that purchase would entail it's the same as it was a couple weeks ago but I would just like you to remind folks of what is included in that and then uh, first talk about the sale that we have planned for next week and the importance of that. Yep, so one of the things that we built into our financial models after three years of ownership of the devices, we sell them off. And that maximizes their, their resale value. Um, it also ends up keeping us in our, our total cost of ownership as lowest um, through uh, minimizing our care costs and things like that and not having us have to get more tech personnel and things. So um, three years ago uh, was the initial uh, Mac purchase for the high school. So we've got approximately 550 uh, MacBooks. Those are the ones that the students have been using. We've got 35 MacBook Pros, which are the, the silver Macs that the um, high school staff have been using, um, as well as a few <coughs> iMacs, which you've probably seen, you know, like Denise Slamacki and uh, Beth Forbes, people like that, um, using. Uh, so a big portion of the way our financial model works is selling off this hardware. It's, it, it, it's scheduled, we're planning to hopefully end up bringing in approximately $180,000 through the sale of this hardware. And then it's been already built into the 13-14 uh, budget year. So um, kind of just have to say, you know, if, if we don't do that, that puts a big hole in this year's budget. So we've been tentatively planning on moving forward with that 
um, this Monday. Um, if you get it, we're going to end up getting notification out in the paper uh, for uh, Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Um, we're also going to end up putting out an email to all the students and all the staff about it, trying to get out the word uh, that way. Um, any questions on the sale portion? That's the, so we're talking about the sales to 566. <coughs> exactly. They so, had their three year life and they're in the, for turning those over. And, that's exactly it. Yeah, basically the, the MacBook Pros and the MacBooks we'd be selling, that's, this is going to be a piece that would end up replacing that now that that other hardware is three years old. Um, Howard, if you have any point, you have any Okay. <clears throat> um, so, anything more with sale questions or? What happens to the ones that are not sold? Up? Um, we first want to end up offering these up to the local public for sale. Um, there's there's a lot of students that have expressed interest in being able to end up getting the machine that they've been using, so they can use it in college or what have you. Um, there's also a lot of interest within the public itself. Um, you know, the the computers we're offering are really good deal. So I think there's going to be a lot of community good that could come about through um, more people being able to get them locally. Um, we don't anticipate selling all of them that way. So we've been uh, collecting bids and doing evaluations of a couple different companies that will basically uh, buy back and mass whatever we don't sell locally. Um, so I've been going to customers and things like that and um, it, we have some very good options that way and we hope to end up making a decision one way or the other on that. Um, luckily most of the bids that we've gotten in are very, very, very similar for how much we would get per machine. And you can earmark a certain computer, say, if a student wants their specific MacBook? Yes. They do, they do. Okay. Um, have you looked this year at, say, the return, say, if you're looking at these extra companies, say, for a, a, if they were, if we had kept them for four years, what the sale price would be, and if we would lose out on that or not? Not specifically through these companies, um, but it's, that type of valuation is a fairly easy thing to end up doing if you, really, eBay is one of the best sources because it's got the highest volume of um, computers that you can look at that are used and they generally have pretty good information about the, the degree of use, like um, how good a condition they're in. So doing that kind of comparison, um, there's a pretty big drop in value um, over the next year um, that we would, we would save a considerable amount selling them now, let's just put it that way. Um, and I think another big piece with that is when it comes to the reliability of the machines, we, you know, this is this is a process that we kind of started three years ago. And in that case, we ended up purchasing a three-year warranty with these devices. Um, there's no option to add on a fourth-year warranty at this point. So any repairs would end up having to come out of pocket. And um, you know, there's we, we kind of can foresee when the repair rates start going up if they're still in a one-to-one -one scenario. And um, you know, we're we're starting to end up seeing that we might have to do some significant repairs out of pocket because there is no warranty associated with the machines after the 16th. <coughs> so, yes, John? Ken, it, wouldn't we also lose out on the state incentive? Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, right now, the state's got a pool of $7 million that they're going to end up splitting up um, amongst uh, schools that buy student hardware. Um, last year, we ended up getting $99 back per device. <coughs> Um, they're offering that incentive again this year. Um, right now, based upon the forecasted numbers, we're looking at about $70 per device. Um, currently, they have no plans of offering a similar incentive next year. Um, so that, you know, I mean, we're talking, on, I think, the number of $65,000 that we, you know, be able to automatically get back from the state that we're more or less guaranteed. So to summarize, we have the sale the revenue of the sale included in this year's budget, and we'll punch a big hole in this year's budget and not do that. We're at the sweet spot in the ownership where, um, you know, if we would have sold them a year earlier, uh, we would have taken it on the chin a little bit. If we sell them a, little, a year later, we take it on the chin a little bit, and we would lose out the, the uh, trade grant. And I guess to kind of put a little bit finer point on if we waited a year and sold this, um, you know, Estimating exactly what kind of repairs we have to end up doing on this harbor is tough. 
and I went through and really kind of tried to minimize it as best we can and project it, then we'd probably end up spending as much to maintain and repair machines that we have next year because of the lack of warranty and things like that and their age, um, as we would you know, the, the payment for purchasing new computers. So essentially, if we kept them for a fourth year, uh, we'd end up having this hardware that's way less reliable, would require far more personnel, far more time to end up maintaining, would increase frustration for staff and students, and we'd spend the same amount. So every three years we're going to go through this, I, 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 right? Is that Correct. right? So is there any way to level it out? It just seems to me that there's, they jump. So, you know, every three years it's, it's a huge chunk and you're trying to sell so many, you know, computers all at once. If you level it out throughout the years, then they're good for three years, right? If In you have them 7th, 8th, and ninth, sell them, then, you know, and... I, I, I trust me, it would be so much simpler if we ended up having it so that it was, it was more equally distributed and, and such. But the problem is, when it came to sort of the logistics of rolling it out and the, the educational benefits to rolling out how we did, that's why we chose to do that. And then what we kind of have kept in our back pocket is the ability through financing to be able to level out our yearly expenditures. So unfortunately, I come to you guys every three years with a big purchase amount. But when it comes to how much the district is you know, paying on a yearly basis, that is steady. And I don't know, Howard, do you want to yep. say more on that? Yep, I, you know, um, the, the goal has been to do just what, what you're proposing, Chris, and to having more of a stable um, expenditure. And we're doing that through financing, as Ken said, rather than the purchasing. That way we're not sacrificing the educational benefit in order to smooth it. We're smoothing it through that financing structure. And we're able to structure the payments to keep that steady 330, 350-ish amount. Throughout. Throughout, you know, this going this year, next year, the blah, blah, blah out there. That's the goal. I'm sure that will tick up slightly as, you know, everything in the world gets a little more expensive as you go out there. But the, the goal has been to stabilize that to achieve that budgeting of a constant amount so that we're not having huge, you know, deficit one year and uh, then trying to put money away in a uh, surplus to pay for the next three year to stabilize it through the funding. So we can certainly look at stabilizing the purchases, but we're achieving the cash flow through financing right now. But we can look at anything. And I guess kind of explain why we kind of have this uneven purchasing distribution is because the first year we ended up doing all four grade levels at the high school, which was a fairly large purchase. But then we really didn't have things in place to sort of do another sort of comparable rollout the second year. So that's why we ended up looking at doing the pilot program with the iPads and then also at the middle school. So that allowed us to basically scale things up and get ready you know, get all the sort of pieces in place so when we do spend the money, we get the most bang for our buck educationally. So that's why we kind of had that smaller purchase that second year. Then the year after that, we were all ramped up. We had everything in place. We knew we were going to get a really, you know, big positive effect out of it. So that's where we ended up doing sort of that, that medium purchase, and now we're to the third year. And we've got um, basically all the high school machines, which is that uh, 566. Plus, we end up having two grade levels, which currently do not um, have the one-to-one. -one. That's this 120 for next year's fourth and fifth grade. Um, and then we've got some, some additional staff um, iPads in here. In this case, what, what we found at the elementary level is that having the iPads really frees up the instructor um, to be more mobile in the classroom. Um, with the laptop, you know, it's kind of cumbersome to try to carry it around and use it. Whereas with an iPad, the teacher can end up cycling around the room a lot more. They're not tethered to their desk, and you know, they can they can hand off the iPad to students. It can be a much more interactive environment. So, um, since we provided an iPad to all the elementary um, teachers and a Mac to them, we're going to follow that same model at the high school to keep things equal and get the same benefit. Um, so that's that 40 iPad here is there. I will get back to this in one side. Um, the rest of this would end up being just basically adapters to kind of give us some redundancy for um, projecting. Um, we've got these items which are for office staff. They have kind of a little bit different needs um, for their usage. Um, we've got the, the external iPad keyboards. That's something that is required 
for the SBAC testing, the state um, mandated testing. Um, when they were, originally what they said was with the iPads, the, the external keyboard was optional. But what happens is when you use the keyboard on the iPad, it takes up a good chunk of screen real estate. It, you know, it's like at least a third of the screen. And that limited them too much with the design of the test. The, you know, students couldn't see enough of the actual assessment that they were taking. So they've kind of upped the requirements and now require us to use external keyboards. So this is a sufficient amount for us to be able to do the state testing as well as assisting on the IAP. So um, our students will be familiar with that. Um, and then lastly, this is, this is some cabling for iPad carts for um, the fourth and fifth grade. Uh, classrooms. So the one thing that I kind of bounced over is this 130 iPad Airs because this is a weird situation. Um, this is sort of the, one of the situations where we might deviate from three-year device recycle or uh, refresh pattern. And what we ended up doing is we looked at how much money we are going to get from the state, 70 bucks per device. Um, iPad 2s have retained their value really well. Um, most consumers don't really see a big difference between those and the iPad 4 and the iPad 3. So they're pretty comparable in price. So once we kind of looked at how much we could get for them, how much the state would give us for purchasing new devices, we would save about five grand by selling off those iPad 2s and purchasing <coughs> new ones and leveraging the state inside. So it's not a huge sum of money, but it's just an easy way for us to end up getting new hardware into the hands of our students and coming out ahead financially. What, is, what do you anticipate the refresh rate is for the keyboard? That is a really good question. Um, these are specifically made for education. So they're supposed to be extra burly and hold up to kids. <laughs> now, that said, they've really only been on the market for a year. Um, We've got some sample copies. We've ended up talking to some schools that have purchased them. All indications are they're going to be really durable, and they're probably going to end up having a longer than three-year um, lifespan. But you know, it's it's one of those things where you don't really know until you get some time under your belt. Any other questions? So for tonight's. Discussion is just the sale of 566. Correct. But with, but I mean, I think we need to understand that if we sell them, and then if we don't approve a lease, if we don't get a good, good lease for the purchase, then we are out equipment and, and things come to a grinding halt. Right. For, for, uh, I mean, so we get we have to go into this with the idea that we do vote yes to go ahead with the sale. Um, we need to be thinking that well, it's more likely than not, unless we find a bad, unless we don't get any good rates or anything, we need to push ahead with it to keep the program going. And I will just jump in here real quick to say that we have already gotten a lease proposal. It's actually got a slightly better uh, interest rate um, already. So. Um, that is one positive thing that we can say for sure. But we commit on the sale of the 566. The only thing we really commit on is buying 566. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, otherwise you could run the problems. Now, not everything else would be have to necessarily go with the sale of those 566. Sure. That could come up for discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And any other debate or? Clarification that's needed. Thank you. Thanks, man. Anything else to see about? No. Okay. Budget updates. Sure. Well, in uh, two weeks from today, we'll be uh, <coughs> discussing two budgets. The first is the final amendment of this year's budget. And the second would be our starting budget for the 14 15 school year. I'm just going to give you a copy of what's projected on the screen for you to read for your study. So, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're anticipating at this point, um, including in that uh, the first, the amendment, and secondly, the uh, starting budget for 14 15. 
On March 12th of um, this year, you guys approved our last amended budget that had projected a deficit of about $128,400 at that time. Um, since that amendment, we've um, discovered some changes that we'll, we'll be including in this amended budget. And basically, it's about $120,000 of additional revenue. Uh, the two primary sources of that would be the revenue from the Great Lakes uh, Virtual Academy. We collect three percent of our state aid, and then also we were able to qualify for and we approved the resolution to qualify for best practices, which generated about eight thousand dollars. There were some other adjustments on the blended count, a little bit of Perkins money, but overall about one hundred twenty thousand dollars of additional revenue since uh, March twelfth. <coughs> On the expenditure side, um, right now anticipating that we may, and as a may, need to change that amount by about just under $30,000 of increased expenditures. Um, we'll continue to look at that closely. Um, even though we're nearing the end of the end of the fiscal year, I need to remind you that in the school business, uh, uh, expenditures, many of our July and August expenditures all get accrued back into this fiscal year. So there's a lot of bookkeeping and uh, work and distribution that needs to happen so that we can get that final budget. Um, basically, if you add those numbers together, it's close but not quite exactly a balanced budget. We typically um, experience a favorable variance. Uh, we're prohibited by law from exceeding budget. Um, if we run a 1% favorable variance on a $14 million budget, that's $140,000. Um, and typically, we're in the $100,000 to $150,000. Um, better than what we're budgeting just through favorable variances through all the account groups. So anticipating, um, you know, at the end of next year, um, at the end of this year rather, presenting you with a budget that's basically um, balanced with revenues that equal to expenditures, but anticipating at the end of October, whenever we will get audit results, it being a little bit more favorable than that. Um, so at this point, when we're working on budget projections, we're taking a look at um, where do we think this year's going to end, and then what, what's different next year. And um, at this point, there's still things that are um, either up for debate as far as um, how they're going to be um, let, determined legislatively or how they're going to be interpreted. Um, you know, will we meet the best practices qualifications? Will we, so we, we have to make a certain number of assumptions at this point. They're our best guess as of today. But right now, um, what we're proposing through this worksheet, and this is the assumptions that we'll build into the budget that we present you with two weeks from now. We're anticipating an increase in foundation per pupil of $175 per student. It generates uh, just, just about $265,000. However, um, we're um, planning on declining enrollment equal to about 33 FTEs. That number is, I think, conservative. I hope that we don't get there, and I don't think that we will lose that many students, but we want to be on the safe side, and we didn't just make that number up. We had our enrollment projections updated um, by a company who does it when you're going for a bond proposal, and that was their most likely scenario, and their most likely is, that was their, they have a lot of eight different versions, but it's the, the recommended budget, conservative budget to be safe for action. So minus 33 students pretty much wipes out the increase of the, the um, you know, in the foundation allowance. Uh, we've also received our allocation for federal revenue and uh, see that it's going to be down about $27,600. We had been, as we worked through the budget committee, um, we have been anticipating an increase in PILT revenue but learned Monday that we're actually going to experience a decrease. There's a, they're anticipating a 10% decrease in the PILT. So we adjusted that from a gain of 34000 to a decrease of 45000 So that was a $79,000 swing, about 10% of what we get. Um, we're uh, another conservative number, I hope, and I'm quite confident, is increased revenue from Great Lakes Virtual Academy, as I mentioned earlier with a positive number up. A big part of that $119,000 that we're adjusting in this year is increased uh, revenue there. I'm only uh, budgeting for their enrollment to increase by 100 students. Uh, they had a blended count, or they had a, a September a supplement count of 890 students. So that would be putting them at 990 blended, um, which I think is a very, very safe number. Um, <coughs> use so yeah we're not um, I, I don't think we're 
being overly optimistic in that area at all. Um, as you guys know, um, we decided we were going to do the expanded share time program, and we thought that that would generate, um, well, we budgeted $50,000 in revenue. Uh, the state aid bill appears to um, have a decrease in our retirement costs. <coughs> um, we calculated that at about $84,000. Um, still some analysis to do on that because sometimes it's, I think that's a good number, but you never know because sometimes they give it to you and then they take it right back some other way. So, um, but we do have that in there. Um, we have hard caps for our insurance, um, but those hard caps increase uh, statutorily. Uh, we have an allowance for that statutory increase in the hard cap, and also they went back and modified the two-person cap. Um, the two-person insurance, someone taking insurance subject to hard cap paid more out of pocket for a two-person policy than they did for a full family policy, the way it was originally enacted through law. So when someone came in and their son or daughter had aged out or gotten a job and gotten their own insurance and they came in and reported it to us, they were rewarded with an increased payroll deduction. They've gone back and tried to correct that um, a little bit through statute. It's still not fully making sense, but it's moved in the right direction. So we put allowance in for that. Um, each year we do this, we increase, uh, we have an allowance of about $50,000 for increased operating expenditures and when I'm saying that I'm talking about the cost of diesel, the cost of electricity, the cost of all those things that are, you can't do without <coughs> them, creep up each year. How is it, what, you're, you're probably throwing that on a percentage, what is it? Uh, One up five, seven percent? It, it includes a whole, a whole magnitude of Thing. It's not just a percentage, it's not just subject to things I've cited. There's all kinds of little trickling things in there. It's it's typically been about fifty thousand, and that's what we just use based not as a percentage, but based on historically. That's what we see in all those areas. Um, the energy rebates are, were something we received this year, and since we're starting with this year's budget and then modifying it, that was a one-time. Uh, $69,250 that um, allowed us to keep more of the energy savings from our energy improvement project. The, we were able to use that rebate to offset the payment and didn't have to use all the savings to make the payment. But that was a one-timer, so next year we won't have that, so we need to back that back out. Uh, savings from teachers' retirements, as uh, John mentioned earlier, we had a number of retirees. Um, and we're replacing them. Uh, we see, see uh, savings of each time we do that. Even if we are replacing the teacher, um, there's a difference uh, you know, in wages and often in insurance too. Um, you know, a lot of times they're coming in a single subscriber rather than a two person or full family. Uh, Howard, can I yep. go ahead? I want to come back to that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Let's keep the budget flowing. All right. Um, as you guys know, our teachers stepped up and took concessions last year, and those concessions took place, uh, started December 9th. This year, they'll be in place for the full budget year, so there's an increased savings of about $65,000 there. Um, the interim assessment program um, is something that we've committed to, and that we're anticipating about $20,000 of expenditures. That is a new <coughs> expenditure. It wasn't something we were doing in the fiscal year we're about to end. Uh, we're dissolving the online cooperative school, so this year we're anticipating um, when we settle up up there and have budgeted about $100,000 of revenue from that. We won't have that, so I'm backing that back out. Transportation savings, we're looking at some savings um, in the transportation department of about $25,000. And then, um, and, and I want, this is a similar to, but it's always changing um, document as what we've been working with the budget committee as we've met. And um, we've listed through that process um, capital purchases and improvements, a number of things that we feel that we need to be um, replacing. Um, the list was longer. As you can see, there's more things listed than there are numbers. But what we did was we zeroed it out until we balanced the budget. So we, um, we kept the things that we saw, thought were the highest priority. We have a bus purchase included. Um, our fleet is aging. We've done little spurts where we've bought three buses at a time, and then we go four years without buying one, and then we buy two and go another three years. So we've been, even though we've been purchasing buses, we've been trickling backwards. So we're trying to, to catch up a little bit. So we included a bus purchase. The Cisco, oh, thank you. The Cisco um, switch replacement is something that we talked to you about. Um, 
something that we feel we need to do. Included that in the budget. MHS parking lot repairs, uh, I talked about this with the budget committee. Um, even though we're in a spending freeze, $25,000 is a lot of money. I really see the potential to, if we don't maintain that parking lot, to have a lot more costs down the road. So just feel that's something we need to do. And the same would be true of the next item, which is water waterproofing and clocking at the high school. We have some problems with water penetrating um, the mm -hmm. walls and also some of the caulk just after the years that it's been there starting to fail. So we want to address that before it turns into a bigger problem when we have a lot of water inside the building. So these are the assumptions that we're taking into the budget building process. So we're looking at almost practically a balanced budget this year. Hopefully by the time we get it figured out, we'll come to you with something balanced for this year we're ending. And this is what we're anticipating being different next year and looking like we can get back to balance um, if we eliminate some of those capital purchases up to the you know, point of getting that balance. So that's that's kind of the basis of what we're what's going into the, the numbers we're crunching that will eventually end up in a format very similar to your monthly financial report with it. So I just wanted to share those assumptions with you at this point. Um, I made mean, a couple of points. So those last two items are twenty five for the thousand for the parking lot and fifteen thousand for the uh, caulking and waterproofing. Um, you know, you can save money by not changing oil in your car for a little while, and then it costs you a whole lot more, and that's kind of where we're at with these things. We can save money by not doing them this year, but they're going to cost us a whole lot more next year or the year after, and the damage that, that's going to be done if we don't do those. So, uh, just a comment on that. I think um, this budget is quite conservative uh, in a number of areas. Uh, I hope that it, it's quite a bit better, but until we get to see student counts, uh, I'm not comfortable putting those numbers in. Um, but it's the best budget. This is the fifth one, I think, that I've been involved in, and it's the best I felt presenting one to the board. We made a lot of tough decisions. <coughs> we made a lot of tough decisions over the last two years, and um, we didn't have to make uh, those type of decisions this year. And a big part of that, and we owe continued gratitude to the, to all the employees who took concessions. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're not too far away from maybe moving back to something in the other direction, but who knows on that. Um, quick comment on the uh, savings from retiring teachers. You saw it was 226000 I think six teachers, so we spent about 30000 Six to be accepted, yes. So we spent about 30000 and we're saving 226,000. So Actually, I've netted the 30 out of that. Oh, so you've netted the 30 out of that. Yep. So there you go. We saved 256,000. So if people wonder why we do those incentives, it's because it's good for the district, and I also think it's a um, uh, and we wouldn't do this if it wasn't good for the district as well. But it's also a way to entice those people to do it and, and tell, tell them thank you at the same time. So. Uh, that worked out really well for the district. Um, I, I think that was it. I got, I, got, I got a question or a comment, but it's not really related to the budget, but it's all related to, I hope some of these items get in the capital purchases again, especially one like this water softener. You, it's, this isn't really related to the budget, but I want to ask you while we're talking about it. Are we using the one at the high school right now? We're limping on one right now. We need to use those. Yep. I, I, and that's, people that don't understand that, that softened water with a boiler is very important. That's going to and you're going to end up with a situation like you had the old Kennedy where we destroy your pipes and everything yep. else. So we need to make sure we take care of that. Every and once in a while, be. Kathy will bring in a bucket of scale from her dishwasher and put it on my desk just to remind me <laughs> how important it is that we do and this. That's going to be inside your boiler and inside all your pipes in that yep. building. We don't keep up on the song. That 16 was there earlier today, and then as the numbers you know changed above, we backed out those 
increase capital improvements until the point where we got back to zero. So please don't let that slide because in well, it, 20 years we're going to be really regretting not yeah, taking. It's care very of similar to the other two <coughs> situations that John. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't. No one sees, so they could have a real negative impact financially if it's ignored. Anything else? Any questions? So we'll get the final budget of week or so before the next meeting? You have to get next, they'll go on next Thursday okay. or Friday. Yeah. 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 And again, right as of right now, this the changes that will be in that are what we highlight here in this two items. There's not a lot. But we'll be spending a lot of time going over it between now and then. So. You don't anticipate us uh, from the dissolution of the online co-op having any funds coming back in? <coughs> Um, I have not budgeted anything on like sale of equipment or anything like that. It, um, that enough that I'm under to you about it this year. We have 100 grand in revenue this year. Okay. And then we have no revenue from that. Next year. Or we do have 50 for the diocese? Yes, 50 for the share of the time program, which again, I think is concerned extremely. Yep. Um, but again, let's, let's start. Um, just one other thing on process. Uh, so all the ad administrators, uh, Jim participated as a board member. Um, all the bargaining unit groups were invited to send a representative or uh, in the case of the teacher group, uh, I think they sent more than one. I'm not sure exactly how many had their bill, but um, Bill was uh, one there and Stacy was there. Um, and we, we presented what we saw, we, we asked for input, we, we gave the opportunity for questions, there was some good questioning, um, you know, we, we looked at are there different ways to do things, and, um, you know, we did this uh, exact same process three or four years ago, and it was a lot longer and a lot more suggestions, and, and where we're at now as a district is, We've peeled things back pretty darn tight. There just aren't a lot of areas that we can change things without impacting kids or programs or services. And so um, we, we only had two meetings, and at the end of the second meeting, uh, we were kind of looking at, you know, do we need to meet again? And the consensus was, no, this is, this is what we would present to the board. And then from that meeting till this week, um, the state passed what to me was a very positive uh, budget for state aid. It was way uh, better than I had anticipated. Than we had. Uh, we were. We had one hundred dollars rather yeah. than one seventy-five. Right? Hundred versus one hundred seventy-five. We didn't have the mixers offset in there, which was eighty-four thousand. So it, it really came in significantly better. Uh, than we had budgeted. So, um, anyway, <coughs> there was input, you should know, or the opportunity for input from the various groups into this. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Howard. Yeah. Thanks, Howard. Right. Appreciate it. Um, Next, let's talk about it. Yep. Um, so, we had. <laughs> We decided that we were at the point where, um, you know, this year we had a section, the last couple of years we've added a section of kindergarten, or not kindergarten, but we've added a section of kindergarten or, I can't remember what the grade was, maybe third grade a couple of years ago. So this year we included the um, money in the budget anticipating that we would need a fifth section of kindergarten, which is, we had five this year. Um, it, uh, a month or so ago, we only had four sections worth of students. Well, we came to this hiring process, and this training that the teachers are going through is, is monumentally important to the academic achievement <coughs> of the students, this Spalding training. And any teacher that's in our district, we want to have that training. And anyway, we looked at our enrollment numbers for kindergarten at that time, and we were already at, at, at 25 a section. And so we went ahead, that's why there were three hires here instead of just two. Uh, we, we've 
we're in essence adding that fifth section of kindergarten because we're already at 25 in this, this June. We're going to be, you know, um, which is not low numbers for kindergarten. You know, 25 is not low. Um, excuse me, there were 25 in the current sections and, and growing. So now there will be more like uh, 20, and they'll probably grow up to 24, 25 students. But, um, so that was included in the budget, and the three hires will make that. And we'll be way better planned this year than when we came in in September last year and did it. It's just, there's no reason not to do it this kind of Because historically, you get a lot of those. Some of those sign up at the last minute. Always at the last minute. Always. And you want those low numbers at those three levels. So um, I think it's a good decision uh, for the kids, for the district, for the teachers that can go through the training. It's just all around great thing to do. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um, moving on to old business, the oral policy is set in read. Oh, anyway, have any questions on that? Again, this batch was kind of boring, not that the others are exciting, but um, you know, it was pretty much a few statutory changes, a few places where we were bringing stuff that was typically in the administrative guidelines into the actual policy. Um, just not, not a lot happening. <laughs> So, Howard, you know, we talked about that earlier, but I noticed what's there with epinephrine pins, so we're going to run people through the training. And yep. Maybe a, a few more. I want to play. have <laughs> done it before. Do it again. <laughs> Read the directions. I, I just can't tell you specifics, but I know that we're, we have, I know that we're planning on doing an increased training in the fall. At the last administrator's meeting, I don't remember the date, but Julia commented on we were talking about PD days, and one of the days when she outlined the topics, it was the happy time. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like stamina. Any other questions about the board? If not, let's move on. Um, under old business, we have wood shops still listed. We really don't have anything to discuss about this, but um, we will revisit this later on in summer. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, I would suggest that, uh, because we had talked last time about the workshop about going through and just seeing the value of them. And I'm, I'm asking maybe if Paul, could you and I maybe go in there with Julia? Sometimes she had mentioned it to me one day with yeah. one of us, but if you could go with me and sure. we'll go with her and we'll get a value to the board so that we have a number of what we have here. And maybe sometime this summer. Can get together? Yeah. Probably yeah. wouldn't do that if you were going through there because I was thinking about doing that too, just to look at it. Wait, the three of us then, if you had to. I don't care, the whole board wants to do it. That's what I think. Good. Yeah. It would be bad we all go together though, to get an idea of what it's right. worth. And uh, there shouldn't be any. Well, we're going to have to do that for the next year. Should we have to Thank you. All right, then moving on to business and action items. I would like to make a motion that we approve the minutes um, from May 14th regular board meeting as presented in our packet, and also on May 28th that we approve those with the exception of changing Chris Johnson to Chris Thompson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So who, who have a second? Uh, motion by Shelley, second by Jim. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Okay. Motion passes. All right, next up is approval of a new board member appointment. Uh, this will be through 12-31-2014. This will be a roll call vote. I would like to make a motion, Dr. and Paul. I'd like to nominate uh, for our open appointment uh, Nick Jaskew. Um, okay. Second. Second. Second by Paul. Um, any discussion at all? Okay. If not, that's all those in favor? No, nope, we're going to do a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Yes. 
Ms. Johnson? No. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Ms. No. Okay. Is that that? Motion passes. Congratulations, Nick. John, thank you for putting your name in the hat. We really appreciate it. We need strong people stepping forward um, to you know, make sure that we're doing what we need to do. Um, again, the elections are up in November. Who's interested? Thank you. And congratulations, Nick. Thank you. Right. You know, I, I, I think uh, Nick said it last year, you have two good candidates, and there was a parent by the uh, vote of the board. Um, you have two good candidates, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see people that are interested in serving the kids in the community. So, again, I appreciate both of you guys doing that. And, and, uh, yeah. Can I just make one comment? Is I, I really, really look forward to being on the board with their ISD experience because I think we have some, I don't know if gaps or problems there are is the right words to say, but I believe that and I hope you bring that to the table for us. I'll do my best. Appreciate Thank that. You. Any other comments? <laughs> um, let's move on to the approval of the council table report. Yeah, I'd like to present for approval the total expenditures of two hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and thirty two dollars and sixty cents. So I have a second. I'll second it. Okay, motion by Paul, second by Tom. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Uh, next action item approval of elementary teacher hires. Make the motion that we approve the elementary <laughs> teacher hires for the 2014 2015 school year. Support. A motion by Tom, support by Shelley. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, next is approval of the OLA policies. Any discussion? If not, we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the NEOLA policies. Motion by Paul. Okay. Second by Chris. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. <coughs> okay. Next is action item approval of sale of Apple hardware. Any further discussion? This is for the 566. This Correct. is, yes. Okay. Um, yep, clarification. Any other clarification? All right. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Motion by Tom. Second. Second by Paul. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Okay. Motion carries. All right. No new business. Can we go on to our second public communication. This portion of the agenda is for persons to address the board. Public comment is limited to three minutes per individual. Please fill out a public comment form if you wish to address the board. Do we have any? No, we do not. Thank you. All right. Announcements. Next board meeting. Um, this is a special meeting to include the budget hearing on Wednesday, June 25th at 7 p.m. at Kennedy. Um, that meeting we will be a full board event. Um, we also have a board meeting, a regular one, Wednesday, July 9th at 7 p.m. at Kennedy. We do not have a work study in July. And then another board meeting, a regular meeting on Wednesday, August 13th. Do I have any other comments from the board, the general comments? If not, I need a motion to adjourn. So, motion by Tom, support by Shelley. Um, all those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no.